Good morning. Myself, Chen Shekhar Pandey, Faculty of Commerce and Dolphin Beach Institute of Biomedical and Natural Sciences Tehran. Today, I am going to start and tell all the students about the objective of corporate governance. So, let us start with our first slide that is based upon corporate governance definition. Why a corporate governance is studied? It's basically because it has a set of structure, processes, policies, and laws that affect the way a corporation is directed, as well as to achieve the maximum performance in the interest of stakeholder. Here there are two words that is corporation as well as stakeholder. A good governance make a interest in the faith of the manager as well as the stakeholders so that there cannot be any conflict between both. So I hope the definition of corporate governance is clear. So let us start with it. our next topic that is objectives. Objective of corporate governance is to enhance the value of owner as well as top level of managers. Owner is one who provide the finance for a business, whereas top level of management are those who controls and manage, manages the business. I hope objectives are also clear. Let us start with our next topic where all the students get confused is the difference between management and governance. Management deals with daily operations while governance is about underlying ethics. Here, ethics means the code of conduct, code of conduct of an organization. A poor management can affect governance, whereas weak governance undermines the financial operations performance of a corporation. Weak governance may also affect the faith of all the owner, investors, and creator of an organization. Now, our next topic is Corporate Governance Parties There are basically three parties in a corporate governance. One is shareholder, another is director, and third one is the managers. Shareholder Shareholder are those who own the business. Director They also act as the guardian of the organization or company's assets. Next, it consists of manager who use the company's assets. I hope corporate governance parties are clear to all the students. Let's start with next topic. That is the need of good governance. Why a good governance is needed? It is due to the following reasons, which are as follows. One, good board practices. Second, control environment, board commitments, transparent disclosure, as well as the well-defined shareholders. These five points are the heading of good, good governance, which we are going to read in our next slide. Good board practices. Good board practices is one which help in clearly defining the role and authorities of board of directors. It also consists of duties and responsibilities of director that has to be understood by the top level of management. It also consists of board which are to be present in a well structured manner. It also have a appropriate board procedure which is to be followed in each board meeting. Second heading is cost cost controlled environment. The controlled environment consists of risk management with a framework that is present in an organization. It also consists of disaster recovery system that has to be in the, in the place of an organization. The very last heading under this is safety environment and media management techniques that are to be strictly followed in a company so that a environment which consists of internal as well as external are to be properly assessed. It also consists of transparent disclosure for a good corporate governance. Transparent disclosure in terms of financial and non-financial information as well as financials that are prepared that has to be in accordance with the IFRS. 
Now, what is IFRS is basically International Financial Reporting System. Now, it also consists of high quality annual report that has to be published into the newspaper as well as the website of the organization. It must be based upon web. The web based disclosure says it must be disclosed into the organization website. It also consists of companies registry filing up to date, which means its incorporation should be up to date. The next topic under this is well defined shareholders. The shareholders meeting should be conducted. Either it is annual meeting or a monthly meeting accordingly. A shareholder's right must be formalized as well as a clear definition of explicit dividend policy must be given in advance. So these are the elements which are to be present in a good corporate governance. Now, what are the elements of good corporate governance? It must consist of accountability, transparency, regulatory framework, business ethics and social responsibility as well as administrative structure. If these elements are present, then it is said to be as corporate governance. Now let us read with our first topic that is accountability. Accountability is nothing but a plan of a good accounting system for its activity in order to prepare an effective financial statement. I hope all of you are clear with the financial statement. So I, I think I, uh, I should not explain what is financial statements. So, and it also consists of all the disclosure of the result in a transparent manner that has to be published into the web as well as the newspapers. The design of reporting should be improved and perfect in the newspaper as well as the website. So, we shall start with the next topic that is the transparency. Transparency of corporate action into the newspapers, website and all the mediums that has to be communicated. It also consists of consequences of regulation, local norms and set of information and privacy and business policies which are concerned with the corporate decision making. As well as it consists of operations which are open to the employees, stakeholders, shareholders and general public. So it consists of transparency. Now it also consists of the disclosure of material. Disclosure of material matters concerning the organization should be timely and balanced to ensure that all the investors have access to clear, fatal information. So, our transparency heading is clear to all of you. Let us start with our next topic that is regulatory framework. All the regulatory framework should be in the interest of companies and stakeholders so that the business organization may grow according to the interest of stakeholder as well as the manager. Next, the framework of rules and systems within and the authority is exercised and controlled by the operation. All the laws should be followed according to the company's law and all the respective laws in which a business are. The next heading under this is the business ethics and social responsibility which a company is running. It has to follow all the ethics and responsibility through which a company can drive strategies, goals, policies and activities and keep in mind the values and ethics. It also consists of responsibility regarding the environment and human right issue. It has the element of reducing the pollution and wastage of material. And our last heading under this is a good admin, admin structure indicating the information provided by the corporation is efficient and correct that has to be understood under the administrative structure. 
It indicates a company probability of success or failure in a long as well as short run period. It should not include the dishonesty between management and stakeholder so that a cooperation can be strong. A good corporate governance has these five elements which we have studied as follows. I hope my lecture is clear to all of you.